FedEx Ship Center. Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week, super, super excited because I have a new addition that we're going to set up for and put into the tank. So excited. I'm so excited about this little guy. I just can't. I'm excited. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first, let's get this tank set up. This tank, super, super cool. It actually came from my son's best friend's mom who just had it and she thought that it would make a super cool tank. We turned it into a tank. It was an alcohol display case, but there's already ventilation on both sides as well as on the top and on the bottom here. And there's a locking mechanism. There's also already kind of like a section under this that would probably be fine as a drainage layer. I just thought this would be a fun project. Obviously, this is about equal to a 12 by 12 by 18. The gecko's not gonna be in here forever, just for a little bit, so it's fine. This tank wasn't the easiest thing to turn into a tank. Um, we did have a couple little hiccups, but it worked out beautifully in the end. First hiccup is the front substrate barrier part isn't very big, and I didn't realize that until after I got started or else I would have put a thicker barrier in, but I feel like giving it this sort of slope definitely helped out the overall look of the tank, so it worked out. I did go ahead this time and put the springtails. I just dumped an entire thing of springtails, charcoal and all, directly into the soil and mixed it up really good. This is how I usually intend to set up tanks and I just forget about the cleanup crew every single time. It never fails. This time I remembered to put in those springtails, so I was able to just mix them in and there are so many springtails in this tank. They are doing a wonderful job. So for the substrate, we now have a topsoil, some leftover eco earth that I found, springtails with their charcoal and forest moss. This mixture does a really good job at holding in humidity and will also do a pretty good job at growing plants. We also are adding in BioShot from the BioDude. And all that does is just kind of add some organic matter to the soil to kind of get it started for bioactivity. Heads up, it does smell really, really bad. <laughs> Then we're just adding all the things. There are both real live plants in this and fake plants, a mixture because I want it to be full and I just cannot do that with real plants without them outgrowing the entire tank in a week. So I did a mixture of both. That way there's lots of areas for him to climb and hide. So I'm adding a Dracaena and a Pothos plant to this tank. Both of them came from either Home Depot or Lowe's and I just cleaned them and cleaned them down to the roots really good and we're using them in this tank. And then I have this fake plant just to fill in space and we're actually also going to use sheet moss in this tank as well. At this point I did not have my isopods yet so I put all the sheet moss in there and then later I went back to add those isopods but I added the sheet moss and then on top of that I added leaf litter. I actually also ran out of leaf litter that I did not realize and one of you guys gave me the idea to use some of my animal safe plant leaves that had fallen as leaf litter. So I actually went around all my plants and tanks and collected like pothos leaves, philodendron leaves, and things like that and that's actually what the leaf litter is here. Then we added one of our mushroom feeding ledges. This was like an oops box ledge that we had and I gave the tank one good spray down before it was done just to help the isopods and to go ahead and get that humidity up. Oh, and then I found a vine. So I went back and added a vine too so he can have lots of room to climb. These are the isopods that I ended up using. They're just dwarf whites from Josh's Frogs. These guys like to stay in the soil, so I thought that they'd be really safe for this baby crested gecko because they're gonna be in the soil and they're not at risk of being eaten. And this is that piece of driftwood. You can see there's isopods and little springtails all over it because a little bit of algae started growing on the log. The isopods and springtails started taking care of that very quickly and very quickly realized that the front was bowing. I don't know if it was bowing when I first got it or if the humidity and the light and stuff caused it to start bowing, but it did start bowing. So I had to order some clamps on Amazon and then I just used one of those little felt square furniture pads and cut it into thirds to make it clippable. And then it was time to go to FedEx and 
pick up this little baby. The breeder of this, which is right here, she ships to FedEx shipping locations. You have to pick them up, which is fantastic. That way you don't have situations where FedEx people just leave things on your porch and don't ring your doorbell, which is what my FedEx person does every single time. It was a bit of a drive. It's like a 20, 25 minute drive for us to that facility, but I'm very happy that it worked out that way. And I got my little baby. And then it's just time to put him or her into their new tank. This is Morgan. I have Dexter and now I have Morgan. Someone had a busy night. I also ended up ordering him a hide from the Reptiles of Eden. Both of my other geckos have these, so I thought he should have one too. Ah. Goodness gracious. This hide is actually really cool because the top is a magnet. So if you have like a screen top, this is perfectly okay for that. And then both sides attach with suction cups for like the little rope bridges. I chose rope bridges. You can also choose just like bamboo bridges. That's an option. I think this was the four inch because you choose how long you want it to be. This was the four inch. I got the smallest possible size and it works so perfectly. At this point, I have been handling him almost every day. So he doesn't really care when I'm all up and in the tank. And that is it. That is all that I have for this video. Super excited. If you've been following me for a little while, you know that I have been wanting one of these for such a long time. This specific patterning morph, no, I don't think it's a morph trait. This specific look of Crested Gecko and I finally have it and I'm so excited. Huge shout out again to this person who is the breeder of this animal. I've been following her for such a long time and I was happy that these two awesome geckos like had a little baby and yeah super excited as always if you haven't already please feel free to follow me on the socials and like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications every single time i put out a new video which is every sunday and some wednesdays this week's instagram shout out is here this week's subscribe shout out is here thank you so much for liking and following and subscribing and sharing and commenting and all that jazz you are the bee's knees thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a fantastic day bye i'm excited um what was that i guess I think this is a really, it's really dark over here for some reason. It's kind of, you know.